Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we've got some keto bread. And we'll find out if it's too good to be true right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos. We do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah so today we have a long awaited video this is the aldi's zero net carb bread we have been wanting to try this so much and it's got a good price point which we'll talk about later but we never could run into it when yeah. we were shopping so somebody at church actually snagged us a loaf paying for it first of course so thank you very much for getting it to us yeah so this is supposedly a zero net carb bread. Okay. Um, personally, I do not miss bread and it's kind of a bit of a trigger for me. It took a long time for me to work it out of my life mm -hmm. and just be like, okay, we're done with that. But there are other things that you couldn't have before that you can have now. So I've kind of swapped. I've made a swap in food. Right. So let's go over this. So this is from a company called Love and Fresh, which I believe is the Aldi's like kind of store brand. Yeah. And it says keto friendly, zero net carbs. This is the multi seed. So they have actually two different uh, types. And uh, this is the multi seed bread, which is when I was actually eating bread, I always wanted yeah. not just like whole wheat. I always wanted the one with all the like the little pits of uh, bits of oatmeal, grains, things like that. Me in there. too. So it says vegan, excellent source of fiber, five grams of protein, nine grams of fiber, zero net carbs, zero guilt, 50 calories per slice. Okay. So we're not going to go over the nutrition until after we taste it. I could totally see everybody just grabbing that yeah. if you saw it. We're going to, when you guys ever had bread, did you always like go to the middle of the loaf first to get the biggest pieces? Always. Always, right? So we're going to take that. We're going to close this up. And what we're going to do is we're going to taste this two different ways. We're going to taste it plain. Okay. And then we're going to taste it like if you were going to have a piece of bread with like a toast or something like that. With, with a little bit of Chef Chamois on some it. Some crazy amazing butter. Okay. So this is what it's going to look like. Looks like bread. Definitely looks like bread. It's even got little yeast holes in it and stuff like that. How cute is that? Smells like bread. Definitely smells Definitely like bread. Definitely has the texture of bread. Feels like bread because that's usually when people are making keto, you know, breads at home. That's kind of a complaint that it yep. doesn't feel like bread. Okay. So let's go ahead. Just have a little piece. Yeah. It definitely has that like pull like bread. Like sandwich bread. Yeah. It, it's probably a little bit, I don't know, what's the right word? Gummy? Yeah. Is that is that a good is that the right right word for that texture? Yeah, but it I, kinda pulls apart a little bit. But not not as much as a regular bread. I expect bread. it to. You ready? Alright, here we go. Hmm. The texture's weird. It tastes like wheat bread. You know, like if your parents didn't get Wonder Bread, they got the wheat brand. It tastes like wheat bread. It's got. It's very chewy. I feel like the kids would instantly be like, "Take the crust off this thing." I got news for you. I always like the crust, and I don't want to eat the crust. It's very chewy. Yeah. Again, this is just our opinion. It's very chewy. I'm finding it very chewy. Are you finding it chewy? It's it is chewy, but it's definitely a good fool. Like it's fooling you. I would think that this is just wheat bread. Okay. I wouldn't if I was a kid and I just my parents got wheat bread. We're gonna we're gonna put some chef chamois on here. You always wanted white bread instead for sandwiches, but sometimes your parents would get the wheat bread because it was supposed to be healthier, right? Right, right. And it tastes just like that. Okay. This is gonna give this bread its best shot because Chef Chamois butter is because so awesome. far I'm kind of like yeah I mean and I always liked wheat bread but I just I don't know the flavor is something's odd about the flavor and the texture. Mm. 
I feel like you could put Chef Jamie butter on a boot and eat it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it's bread. It's bread. It's sandwich bread. Yeah. It's not a brioche bun. It's not something that they're going to be like serving on trays fancy like in Paris, France. That's the way to eat Chef Chamois. But it tastes like wheat sandwich bread. Right. I have one thing I want to do. I want to check something. So here's how you know bread. Take a piece mm -hmm. and you kind of crumble it up. And you see, like, what was regular bread? Like, regular bread would stay that, like, dough ball, right? Yes, yeah, so you can Look put it on a fishing this line. Is, that's what I'm talking about. It's, like, gummy almost. Like, a, it's got some elasticity to it. More than, like, that's going back to normal shape. Now, could you do that with regular bread? No. Like, Don't I call mean, it a comeback. Like, try that again. Look at that. It's, just, it's literally bouncing back from a ball to... An open sheet. Like, wow. I don't know about that. Wow. Do you want to put this through five things? Yeah, five things. Five things. So if you're new to our channel, we review all products based on five things. We're going to talk about the ingredients. Does it keto based on a nutrition label? How does it taste? How much does it cost? And finally, would we recommend this? All right. Okay, so number one, the ingredients. Here we go. So the ingredients in this are modified wheat starch, water, wheat gluten, wheat protein isolate, oat fiber, chicory vegetable fiber, sunflower seeds, flax seed, or flaxseed meal rather, right. soybean oil, wheat bran, yeast, vinegar, salt, and preservatives, which are calcium propionate and sorbic acid. And then it says, of course, contains wheat. Man, I am really upset by those ingredients. The ingredients in this are horrible. Yeah. They're horrible. I have worked really hard to get wheat out of my diet. Just like really hard because of all of the junk associated with wheat. Right. Just all of the junk. And they're putting terrible oil in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's garbage. Well, let, let's go down because I know we're going to get some feedback on this. Man. I am of the belief, so you talk about keto. People say like, is this a keto food? Keto or, you know, being in the state of ketosis is when your body is burning ketones for fuel. Right. There's no such thing as a keto food. Yeah. Okay. There's keto friendly foods, mm -hmm. foods that help you get into ketosis, foods that will take you out of ketosis, like sugar, will most definitely kick you out of ketosis. Right. With that being said, when you talk about ingredients, it's not that these ingredients are not keto. Right. Okay. It's that they don't work well with keto. So we're going to go through a few of these. So modified wheat starch. Starch is a sugar. Yeah. Okay. So there you go right there. It's going to, it's a carbohydrate. It's going to elevate your glucose level. Uh, possibly, everybody's different. It is also going to break down, it's gonna cause inflammatory issues because that's what wheat does in our body. Mm -hmm. So even with anything else, you're adding a sugar into your diet. So that's the first one, right there. Then you've got wheat gluten. I actually, if the only thing that was in here was some vital wheat gluten, I'd be like, okay, yeah. they're adding a little bit of gluten so that we can have this elasticity. But it goes beyond that. I mean, it's not the wheat, vital wheat gluten isn't the greatest thing in the world, but I've had a few things, you know, when we went to Omaha and we had that pizza. Absolutely. It had some vital wheat gluten in it. I, I'm okay with it. If it's a little bit. I know what I'm taking. I know I may screw myself up a little bit. But then we've got wheat protein isolate. Then we've got oat fiber. Then we've got another fiber of chicory vegetable fiber. Then we have sunflower, flaxseed meal, finally the good ingredient. Soybean oil, another inflammatory ingredient. I honestly thought that they were going to make this out of like flaxseed mostly. No. That's what I that thought. That would be like Fox Hill Kitchens. Yeah, that's what I thought that they were going to lead with. Basically what they're doing is giving me what I was eating before keto mm -hmm. to try to just... Because then we have wheat bran. Make me happy and make me think that I didn't have to give up anything in order to have a keto 
diet. Right. So we have wheat bran, like I said. Then you have yeast, which yeast itself is fine on keto. Yeast really, you can eat yeast on keto. It's not going to affect you. It's not going to usually affect your breads if you're baking anything because yeast only works with sugar. What mm -hmm. happens is it starts eating away at the sugars and it causes these little holes that you have in your bread. It right. makes it rise when it starts acting with the sugar. So, I mean, I put yeast in our pizza dough, not for it to do anything other than give me that bready taste because yeast is going to kind of give you a little bit of a taste. Yeah. Uh, then you have vinegar, salt, preservatives. Okay. So, yeah. Overall, my personal opinion on these ingredients is they're playing the fiber game. They're adding yeah. a bunch of wheat in and then they're adding in a bunch of fiber so that they can say this has got a bunch of fiber in it and now we can offset all of the, you know, wheat itself. And again, we are not the keto police. No. We are not trying to say, you can't have this, we're taking this away from you. What we're saying is, let's talk about what's really on the inside of this. Right. And what is it going to do to your goals? Personally, I don't think the ingredients in here are the greatest. Yeah. Okay, so number two, does it keto based on the nutrition label? So if we go to the nutrition label, it's one slice, 50 calories, 2.5 grams of fat. Um, it's got five grams of protein, nine total carbohydrates, nine grams of dietary fiber, which makes it zero net carb. And it's not a coincidence. So so if you're looking at, let's, let's first of all talk total carbs, 50 calories, two and a half grams of fat, nine total carbohydrates. So that would be nine times four is 36. Mm -hmm. So how much of carbohydrates is that? That's like what? 80% carbohydrates close to? 75, 80% carbohydrates in, from your calories? And you That's are, a lot. And you are going to be eating two slices because yes. this is to make a sandwich. So if your total carbs, two slices of this is most likely 50% to 100% of your carbs for the day. I would absolutely, if you are going to eat this, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but if you are gonna eat it, I would absolutely be following a total carb protocol. Yep. Or at minimum, at minimum, only subtract 50% of this because they're playing the fiber game. And I don't like them manipulating me right. or trying to manipulate me by saying like, oh, okay, because they know I'm going to do that math equation, and now you're gonna see more and more companies trying to capitalize on that. Right. This company is not in it with me and my family for me to have better they're health. They're to sell you bread. They're trying to sell you bread. Yeah. And they're going to sell bread to a keto community that's like, man, I really miss bread. Right. And again, when you, and then when you also, to go back to the ingredients, and we've talked about this before, if you see a product in the store labeled keto, and it's cheap, most likely not good for you. Yeah. Because in order to be cheap, they have to add a bunch of stuff to make it super shelf stable to last for a long time, like preservatives. And that's right. why most of the keto products that you do get, they're more expensive because they have higher quality ingredients like almond flour, things like that. They don't put preservatives so they don't have a long shelf life. No, in fact, most of the, the, the companies that sell keto baked goods, you have to you have to tell them when you want it so that they can fresh batch right. make it right then. And it's not even just that. It's like a lot of the keto bars, like the perfect keto bars. Like you, they're edible after a while, but you know, they start getting a little bit harder because there's not a whole bunch of preservatives. Like we store 90% of our keto treats thing anything like that, it's all in the freezer because I want to make sure it lasts. Like Lolly's granola in the freezer. Smart cakes in the freezer. All of that kind of stuff is in the freezer. And I personally just don't want the chemicals that are used to make food last a way long time. Because yeah. I don't think that that is necessarily good for you. Right. So yeah, so overall, I mean, if, if you want to go to the zero to the net carbs, again, technically, I guess you can say that it is going to uh, fit within keto macros, but mm -hmm. again, I would not subtract all of these fibers. I just wouldn't. There's no way it's actually zero net carbs where your body isn't doing anything with. Fiber doesn't magically get rid of wheat. It just doesn't work that way. No. Okay. So number three, how does it taste? 
It tastes like cheap wheat bread, cheap wheat sandwich bread right. that you grew up with where you, again, you wanted your, your parents to get the, the butter bread, right. right? The white bread. And they were like, no, we want to eat healthy. So we're going to get the brown wheat bread. Right. I didn't taste a tremendous amount of like seeds and nuts. And it didn't even taste like the old Aldi's bread that were was like an ancient grain Yeah, we ate like bread. the ancient 12 grain bread or Doesn't whatever taste it like that. It tastes like cheap wheat bread. Right. It tastes like bread. I mean, if you absolutely miss bread, it, it definitely has the bread conveyance. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's sort of like bread. It's also very small. When when I compare this to, I mean, if you look at my hand, and I have small hands. I mean, you can look at me compared to Rachel. I mean, this is actually, I think, smaller than your hand. Right. It's not even as wide as Rachel's hand. It is a small piece of bread, especially when you compare it to the bread you used to have. So number four. How much does it cost? How much does it cost? Here's where they snag you. Yeah, so they sell it on our local Aldi's for $2.99 a loaf, which is totally kind of close to the price of regular bread. Totally. Do you think that's a coincidence? Right. No. It's not costing them anymore to make this. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cheap and therefore very attractive. Yeah. Yeah, so $3, again... I, I, it's been a long time. It's been three years since I bought bread, but I seem to remember the better breads we bought was a couple of dollars a loaf, right? Yeah. And again, this is a small loaf too. It is a small loaf, but I think they're getting you with, this is $3 a loaf, or you can go to a real bakery or a Fox Hill kitchen or something like that and pay eight or $9. Which one do you want? Especially when you can get this one in your local store. I'm gonna pay the $3. Yeah. Get the cheap stuff. Okay, so number five, would we recommend this? Abso Smurfly not. <laughs> no. There's so much about this that makes me angry. This is the type of thing that got us into product reviews in the first place. Yeah. Now let's, let's start off right here, okay? So Rachel's saying no, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say no. We are not the keto police. No. I I understand that people need bread. I have personally worked it out of my life, but I understand, you know, there's people who are transitioning in yeah. that and and we used to kind of have the attitude of if it fits in your macros. The only issue with if it fits in your macros is they're playing more and more games. When I followed if it fits your macros, you didn't have nearly as many of these products playing fiber games and stuff like that. No. My real problem with this, and again, it's not a keto police like, oh my gosh, if you have a touch of wheat, yeah. you're going to like, you know, be ruined for life. I mean, people will say that to me about eating a carrot on camera. And right. I don't have any problem with that. It's more of what this represents and what it's going to do to you. Yeah. I look at myself, I'm a carb addict. All this does is remind me of the bread that I can't have. Mm -hmm. And that's where my concern with it is. That it's really cheap, that we continue to use it instead of finding options being, you know what, what is the purpose of bread? It's a conveyance. I think there's plenty of other options for the conveyance that we're looking for with bread. Well, definitely. And I think that this is something that's not meant to be a treat once in a while. You're gonna buy this and every single day, go back to how you used to eat. Right. I could totally see me making a sandwich for lunch every day instead of trying to change all my eating habits. And I'm telling you what, the next time after I get used to having a sandwich every day that I go into the store and they don't have this bread out on the shelf, I'm gonna be like, you know what? Close enough. I'll just maybe I'll just eat one slice You're of the pick up regular the bread. bag of the 12 grain and say, hey, this one's only got four carbs. Close enough. Close enough. And you're going to start going down that rabbit hole. And that's the difference between like I can look at like I can have a keto cookie and even that can trigger some people like Rachel talks about it, yeah. it kind of triggers her. Not that she goes and eats regular cookies, but she kind of goes down that rabbit hole of eating too many. The difference is this is something that you will quickly be like, I'm going to have a sandwich for breakfast, a sandwich for lunch, a Super sandwich for easy. dinner. And the next thing you know, you've had 60 total carbs technically zero net carbs according to their label. Now I do want to say, even though we personally won't eat this and won't recommend it, yeah. 
if you want to eat it, that is perfectly fine. Absolutely. We're just making you aware that the ingredients in this are a little suspect. Mm -hmm. But if you if you do want to eat it, we'll still be friends. Yes. We're not the keto police. You know us. We're just trying to make you aware of some of the concerns that we have for this. But what I would say is if you are going to have something like this, if you're going to follow a net carb protocol, we highly, highly, highly suggest that you put a total carb cap on yourself. Yeah. Don't just say like 20 net carbs and I'm good because what ends up happening is, is you overdo it. So we follow like 20 net carbs at our most, but no more than 30 to 40 total carbs at any given time. We're never going to have more than that. And it just helps us not get into trouble because something like this, I could totally see me having a slice of bread with butter on it for breakfast. I can totally see me having two slices in a sandwich for lunch, and I can see using two slices of this with my hamburger for dinner. Well, now I've had five slices of this bread, and that would be 45 total carbs easily. Yeah. And, and, and not to mention 250 calories of empty calories. That's not doing anything for you. And that's where we talk about when you look at calories, whether you should count them or not count them, this is the kind of stuff that makes you have to count calories it, because it's not going to fill you up. It's not going to do anything for you. Your body doesn't have a shut off mechanism for carbohydrates. So you're just going to keep eating and eating and eating it. So yeah, we highly recommend that you do, if you're going to follow net carb, if you're going to have this, put a cap on yourself. I think 50 is a super generous total carb cap. So you go 20 net carb, no more than 40 to 50 total carbs. Then you can look at if I, you know, eat two slices of this, that's more than a third of my total carbs for the day. But at least you know you won't overdo it. You faced them. So like, even if all of that wheat, if, if none of it is can really be subtracted, all of that fiber they've got in there, most likely you're not going to kick yourself out of ketosis by doing it that way. Yeah. And again, I know that to some extent you may be watching this video and being like, dang it, you're taking this away from me. We're not. Just understand that us and this bread have two different objectives. Mm -hmm. This bread wants to sell product, right? The company behind this wants yep. to sell their bread. We want you to be successful in your keto lifestyle. And I can see this being an obstacle, an obstacle to your relationship with food, an obstacle to you being successful in your weight loss, and definitely, you know, an obstacle to being successful and getting rid of inflammation. You know, a lot of people are gonna say it's dirty keto, which it is, but we are not super, super, like perfectly clean keto. We do have some dirty keto aspects to this. This is mudding keto. I still drink soda once in a while. Right. It's just, we're trying to make you aware of this. Yeah. Well, that is our video for today. Let us know down in the comments section if you've ever tried this or if there's any other keto bread options out there that maybe have a little bit cleaner ingredients. We'd love to look for it and give it. <laughs> and give a review of it. Please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. And until next time, bye. bye.